Okay, this is 201, uh, week seven, part two. Um, this is like a major philosophical question, um, is why, what is the point of, and it's a, but it's, it's a major philosophical question. It's also a question a lot of students have. Why do they need to read books that are so depressing? Um, and I, I think Kafka's idea that it's a form of self-exploration, that big blockbuster Hollywood movies like John Wick, which again, I love John Wick. I love Mission Impossible. I really like the, 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 um, Fast and the Furious movies. I, I, I've watched all the Marvel superhero movies. They're great. They're fun. But they don't give you a chance. You, you're unlikely to watch that. They're enjoyable, but they're unlikely to change you. They're unlikely to really affect you. you you're going to feel happy when you're watching them, but you probably don't think about them much afterwards. Um, whereas I find Kafka stories haunt me for years. Um, and it's why, for example, I should be giving you a break by talking about something non-Kafka, but I can't stop myself because I'm, I'm so uh, obsessed with them. Um, this idea that we, he says that we need books that affect us like a disaster, that grieve us deeply, like the death of someone we loved more than ourselves, like being banished into forests far away from everyone, like a suicide. We need books that are sort of painful for us. A, a book must be the axe for the frozen sea inside us. I think for I think that the, the metamorphosis it gives us a chance to think something hard and uncomfortable which is to what extent are we a little bit like Gregor Samsa in our lives? Like on what extent do our, how much are we like him? And I think a lot of people are like, I'm nothing like him at all, I'm not a bug. Um, but I think a lot of us work too hard like Gregor Samsa does. A lot of us ignore uh, other aspects of our lives besides work because we're so busy all the time. Um, I think a lot of us, for example, feel nervous asking someone else out on a date and go too slow and they get together with someone else. Um, which is something Craig Rassam's do. I think a lot of us have tr are, are with family members, and we wonder if they really care about us. Um, it's uh, or if they're just using us. Um, I think it's. Um, I think these are like these are tough questions. They're unpleasant, uncomfortable questions. But the this is this is this is the thing. Hollywood blockbusters tell stories, and they're fun. And then we, when we go, when you take a literature class, the professor's like, "We're going to read stories," and students are like, "Oh, good, this will be fun, like going to the movies." And it's not; it's something else. Um, sometimes it can be, and I don't think it's this bad, but sometimes it can be like going to the dentist, where like it's not fun, but it's good for you. It, it's healthy for you to do it. I mean, no, nobody wants to go to the dentist. It's not fun to go to the dentist, but it's it's healthy and good for you to do it. And I, it's possible that literature could also serve that purpose. That it, I, I actually think Kafka is kind of fun, but I, I've certainly watched some movies that were so painful um, and so horrific. Um, uh, and I'm thinking particularly here of a director named Lars von Trier who made some very upsetting movies, uh, Melancholia and Antichrist. Um, and they were, they're, they're so upsetting that like, I think they did Dogville. I think they did me some good, but I never want to see them again. Just like, I never want to go to the dentist again. Just like, oh my God, I have terrible teeth. Um, so this idea that, that stories are a chance to kind of explore who you are, um, and that movies don't really, you don't really get a chance to do that because movies, movies give you what you want, but Kafka may be giving you what you need. Um, because what you want is entertainment, but maybe what you need is growth um, or change or self-reflection or something. Um, to me, blockbuster movies are like, I love blockbuster movies. They're really fun. I also love cookies and Pepsi. Um, but I know that if I ate nothing but cookies and Pepsi every day, which is what I want. Every morning I wake up and I'm like, I'd love to have a Pepsi and a pile of cookies. Um, but like, I could, I could do that, but it would be horrible for me. I want cookies all the time. I want Pepsi all the time, but I don't, it's not good for me. Um, in the same way, I think wanting blockbuster movies and nothing and nothing else from stories um, is similar to wanting Pepsi and cookies all the time. I understand why you want Pepsi and cookies all the time. I understand why people go see summer blockbusters and that's those are the stories that they care about in their lives. And if they list their five favorite works of art, they're Marvel movies. I get it. They're fun. I'm not denying it. I'm not saying they're bad. I think they're really fun. Pepsi is also delicious, but like you need some nutrition. <laughs> um, you need some nutrition or your body starts to freak out. And I think you need some something like Kafka or your soul starts to freak out. Um, this is also, I'm not a religious person. And so for me, a lot of these stories um, fill a function that for a lot of people is filled by the Bible. Um, 
this is my Bible. It's Shakespeare and Kafka. Um, it's uh, so, I mean, for, for some, maybe you don't need nourishment in terms of stories because you're getting it elsewhere. Um, that's entirely possible. But for me, this is where I go to for kind of spiritual nourishment is Kafka. And it's and, and the Bible's not always fun to read and Kafka's not always fun to read. Um, but he's, he's powerful in that way. Um, I also, uh, I want to go back to what Jason said, because Jason told me something really funny that stuck with me for a lot of years. Jason said that um, he put it like kids stories versus adult stories, but I think kids stories can be more complicated than that. So I'm going to put it a different way. Some, there are some kinds of stories that set up a problem and then provide a solution. Marvel comics, uh, the, the, the big summer blockbusters tend to set up a problem and then a solution. Um, so that Tom Cruise has to fix a problem and then you're like, oh boy, I hope he can fix this problem. And at the end he does. Um, but that sort of the literature stuff like Kafka and Shakespeare, they, they set up problems that don't have solutions. Um, and that for people is very frustrating because that's how they experience life. In life, you have a lot of problems and you don't know what the solutions are. Um, but what literature is, is it is a record of unsolvable problems. Um, and by reading them, it's a way of thinking through a problem that doesn't have a solution yet. Maybe there is one, but there isn't one yet. Um, and by studying literature, it's, it's an archive of unsolvable problems. Um, and it's, it's a very, very different kind of experience, uh, than the summer blockbuster, but I think it's a very valuable one. Um, but I don't, I don't know. I think, I think it's very valuable to, to sit there and think about real problems that don't have simple solutions. Um, and I think like Gregor Samsa's situation, Othello's situation, they are very complex problems that do not have easy solutions. And I think it's, I think it's worth spending time with. Um, yeah. So uh, I think, so Kafka, by the way, also said that um, God made the world when he was having a bad day and then he just left. <laughs> um, which that, right, the idea that like somebody can get turned into a cockroach, what's the reason? No reason. Um he also, there also was a, a discussion people were having at the time about whether um, there were people in Kafka's day who thought that there were two worlds, a material world and a spiritual world. A lot of people believe this today, um, that there's like the world of physical objects, and then there's a kind of spiritual world of angels and God in heaven and all those kinds of things. Um, and then there were a different group of people who thought there's no, just God isn't really, the only world is the spiritual world. And so they had a debate about, well, you think there are two worlds, meaning spiritual and material, or do you think there's one world, just the material world of objects and atoms and no God? And somebody asked Kafka, do you think there's one world or two worlds? Interestingly, Kafka said he thought there was only one world. And his friend said to him, he said, you really think there's only one world, the material world? And he said, no, 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 no. I think there's only one world. The only world that really exists is the spiritual world. Strange. And then he said that what we call the material world is just the evil in the spiritual world. Jesus Christ. I just, <laughs> Kafka is just, he's devastating and complex and strange. Um, but he really, he, he makes me think in a way that no other author does, and Shakespeare's the same way. There is nothing like Kafka anywhere. Um, Marvel movies are essentially, what, what, one of the things that happens in the Marvel movies is they're very repetitive. Um, I've seen, once you see a hand, once you see a bunch of them, you start to get the basic pattern. Um, Doctor Strange, for example, feels almost exactly like Iron Man. Um, both of them are about egotistical, rich, white men with goatees who only care about themselves. But then they go on a journey and gain special powers and realize that they need to start caring about other people. It's the same movie twice. And the special effects are different because in one, the guy's wearing armor, and the other one, the guy's a wizard. But they're basically the same movie. Um, and and Disney has a formula that they follow and they repeat and they repeat and they repeat. Kafka has no formula. There's no one like Kafka. And there, there's no one like Kafka in the past and there's and before him and there's no one like Kafka after him. Um, David Lynch is as close as you get. Uh, and if you want to find out about that, take film class with him. Um, I'll talk about this more. We'll, let's get into a Kafka story after this. But I just, I wanted to kind of think some, I wanted to spend some time thinking some larger thoughts.